Hey guys, I know you missed the good old sets in the CD classics, so let's get right back to basics. Music videos can be some of the most hilarious, bizarre, symbolic, cinematic, and honestly plainly horrifying ways to promote your music. And today's deep dive includes them all. So saddle up, grab a snack, and actually, on second thought, hold off on that snack. Maybe a beverage would be more appropriate. And get cozy for this very messed up voyage into the world of the most disturbing music videos of all time. This is the disturbing music videos iceberg explained. haven't, please remember to check out our previous installments on this very well-loved format. We've gone over internet genres, shock artists, albums, songs, and if you've got a new one, please do suggest it below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and, you know, subscribe and comment and engage and whatnot, all the things. It helps me find the will to be alive after subjecting myself to this. If I forgot your favorite video, also feel free to berate me down there below too, but stick around to see just how low we can go. Also, squirmy friends, I got you. I'll warn you when we get to the really salacious stuff and I won't show it. Trust me, I don't think you want to see it. And if you do, well, there's always a more out there version of this video on Patreon. Or keeping it one video per artist with some honorable mentions thrown in so we can lessen the berations. Okay, enough with the boring bits. I'm eager to ruin your day once more. So let's get started. Level 4. Tear Down the Walls. The qualifier for this tier is a universal reaction to these videos as what the fuck was that? Exposure before the age of 14 may cause severe childhood trauma. You may want to watch this part away from public settings, just saying. We're kicking things off with a bang, or multiple bangs in this case. The Mafia 6, the reincarnated 3-6 Mafia, definitely didn't hold back when crafting Break the Law. These inferno-tinted four minutes of musical mayhem are 100% real and I don't mean the lip-syncing parts. This thing is almost entirely composed of actual security footage and other assorted recordings. Bang, bang, bang. By this point, I can safely say that when something is Vimeo only, you know it will be well, something. Bottom Feeders by Smut Peddlers is lewd and graphic in the, frankly, worst way possible. Blow, firearms, bodily functions, prison, and subpar rapping are all engaged. I mean, the album is called Porn Again, so I guess uh, everyone involved was fairly compensated for a professional day at work. At least the expectations were clear. Okay, so I, I have a confession to make. I didn't know where to put Aphex. I didn't know which video to pick. Richard D. James sucked me in this hole, obviously shaped like his terrifying grin, and I watched Window Licker and Come to Daddy on a loop at least seven times while producing this video. While Come to Daddy's little Aphex is in that old lady's unfortunate encounter are unsettling, and I personally found Window Licker's smooth criminal hilarious, the video he concocted with Chris Cunningham for AFX 237 version 7, more commonly known as Rubber Johnny, is both of those things. It also has dogs, so could have only been it all along, really. I make the rules. It's my video, okay? The concept is that of a random creature human living in a basement with a tiny chihuahua who knows how to shake it in the weirdest way possible. I'm a fan. Alexa Giraud and Massimo Colarusso were the masterful minds behind the perverse animations of the OC's video for Enrique El Crobador, an animated acid trip with terrifying creatures. Biggest influences, Russian propaganda cartoons, Philip K. Dick, and um, role-playing games, apparently. I do have to say I'm, I'm intrigued by the vertical mouth slash nose hybrid. It's convenient, you can smell and eat with one hole. Come on. And no, I don't know which one of them would be um, Enrique. I 
like to think there's a little of him in all of us and that we don't end up like the green man in the end, hopefully. What you're seeing on screen is a dramatically slowed down version of Black Dice's smiling off because the original flashes by so quickly I'm pretty sure it could spontaneously trigger epilepsy in a blind naked mole rat. A synopsis. A bunch of people wearing groovy hoodies are possessed by Technicolor Demon Chris Chan. Maybe it's the 2040p, but I, I can't not see it. More like things I don't want to remember, am I right? <laughs> Unless you really do want to remember ugly Casanova's collection of excrement and other assorted suggestive items you're probably not going to find at your local flying tiger. Why were children involved in this? What did they do? I guess you tell you want your video to be about kids and shit and well, you reap what you sow. What a nice change of pace. What a breath of fresh candy cotton air. Not like this can go wrong, go oh god, ugh. If there's one thing we've learned at this point is that masks are never good. Masks and pigs is our rule. So there's light knife play, a couple of tooth pulls, and that's a perforated chin. Okay, I'm out. Let's just uh, watch the intro forever and pretend that that was it. Crime of Passion may not be the first thing you think of when I mention indie rock band Broken Social Scene, but it will be now. Welcome to the video for Sweetest Kill, an admittedly super sweet murder, until the act shows up and it's all downhill from there. I can't show them, but I have to say the fake mutilated limps look a little more rubbery than usual. At least there's a worthy bureau. That's nice. And now for another episode of Horror Movie Beatdown, Dizzy Rascal's Couple of Sacks, where our own Dizzy plays a mad murderer with exorcist spinning head syndrome. In a creepy mansion, so you know what that means, fake blood, gag guests, and the occasional headless crawling body, the huge. I like the fingers as candles on the birthday. It's a creative recycling choice. Nice touch. Slayer's Repentless Video Trilogy was something. I'm going to let them explain it to you so you can take a break from a constant droning on for a hot sec. We went with BJ McDonald. He was really, he really liked the fact that he was working with the man. He was a fan. His excitement rubbed off because it made me excited. You know what I mean? Thinking, oh my God, this is going to be fucking great because this guy's like, Wah. The idea came up to do a prequel and a sequel to Repentless. He had a lot of uh, over the top effects and blood squirting and all that stuff, which is fucking awesome. I thought Repentless. When it came out, I said, that's the video we should have done 20 years ago. With an instantly recognizable cast, the gory story starts with a secret ambush at a California diner, which lands an eye patch wearing gangster in a prison in You Against You, the prequel. By Repentless, inmates are rioting and eye patch takes his revenge. In Pride and Prejudice, the final showdown happens, with the original wrongdoers preparing to execute eye patch on Christmas Day. I won't spoil the finale, but did you seriously expect Danny Trejo to come out of something as the loser? Because that won't happen. It just, it just, it never happens. Ain't That a Bitch by 12 Foot Ninja is basically Kung Fu Panda if it was um, an avant-garde heavy metal video. The band trains as dedicated apprentices to upload their albums online. No, I, I don't get the connection either. Unfortunately, a self-hating fan that had been previously rejected by the band remembers the experience and, plagued by insult rage, decides to send them a hate message. One of the members, who has no chill whatsoever and a lot of money to spare, hires a security firm to trace the troll down, challenging to a duel, where he transforms into a literal troll but still ends up through a meat grinder and apparently makes for some great burgers. Tasty. I told you pigs never bode well in this video and Piggy Hog serves me right. In this creative witch house video, Salem members decide to raise and then bury themselves in a field with a pig to then return anew and, uh, you know, self-end in Minecraft. Extremely conceptual. Pure dark art house magic. The birth of the other part of you. If you see a pig, it never ends well for you or them. Really, it just doesn't. In this paranormal activity inspired music video for Back From Beyond by Black Strobe, the shaky cam takes us from a random highway into the outside of a couple's house. We can feel just how creepy the stalking is by the painfully amateurish zoom action, grainy noise and all. 
We finally break in, until it cuts away to much later. Now our vision blurred by weird red splotches. I wonder what those might be. We've off the boyfriend and are now searching for his nude partner, who attempts to run, but it's all to no avail. The mysterious cameraman then pulls the trigger on himself on Minecraft, obviously. Honestly, I don't know, might be better than paranormal activity. Impaled performs. Several band members have slimy fake blood leaking from their face as they sing with uncomfortably tight close-ups. And there seems to be a fun little bound torture thing going on, you know, to shake things up. Other than that, operating theater is kind of average. I can't believe I've said that, I have clearly seen too much at this point. They need to elevate the fake blood quality to keep me invested. This is another one of those you were waiting for. Very Noise by Igor. Potentially the best thing that happened in 2020. But while this might be silly fun and slick animation, there's quite the meaningful backstory. Production team Meat Department spokesman David Nicholas explained that this is an attempt to transcribe the synthesis of numerous testimonies of stroke victims, believe it or not. About three-fourths of stroke victims are heterosexual white males over 50 years old, and the visions that arise from these experiences are in common with the neuroses of this category of the population. Identity disorder, existential anxieties linked to erection problems, transfer phenomenon to a more sporty image of the father, a burning desire for extreme but playful activities such as motocross or solo rock climbing, he says. All in one video. Basically, stroke meets midlife crisis, from what I can tell. But like, much cooler. Creepy Cartoons Tier 4 kicks off with Red Drum is Murder version 1.2 by a beautiful Lotus. An overall short affair where we see the beauty of the moon and whatever is happening here. Giant tentacle alien decides to invade Earth and maxi bikini equipped monsters fight for the future of our planet. Oh, she has a tentacle face, now that's comforting. Reminds me it's only science fiction. If you told me this was a creepypasta, I would have believed you. It's got that Slenderman Jeff the Killer vibe, you know? Mixed with the magic of Russian churches and shirtless kids dancing with weapons, obviously. Another wholesome family affair for Tier 4, Our Icons, by none other than the ensemble of Christ the Savior and crude Mother Earth. With a name like that. Did you ever wish Salad Fingers could be taken to a whole new level? No? You're asking me why I would ever ask you something like that? Okay, fine. What if I told you? It involved flying lotus. Are you more receptive now? Well, ready or not, here comes the video. This brazen nowhere land of twisted faces and nonsensical slaughter continues. Spider heads, flying baby bodies, awkward facial placements that I will not explain. Seriously, the underground's the limit when it comes to David Firth. This was no exception. To be fair, extremely terrible things could be happening in this video, burned by Mushroom Head, and I'd have no way of knowing because the quality is so bad. I can tell there's a head being detached from something that looks like a skull, or is it? Uh, can you guys tell? Let me know in the comments. Burned by Mushroom Head, ladies and gentlemen. I know what you're thinking. Severed head servicing is only at level 4? See, this is what I was talking about when I warned everybody about this. It's been relegated because of its blatant fakeness as a snuff film. Like, that's a dictionary definition opener, you guys. The band's performing with tights over their face with roast beef interspliced in between, come on. Basement torture killings on Minecraft can do a little better than this. Ah, Dying Fetus. Haven't seen this name on our very own iceberg in a minute. Can't exactly say I missed it. End yourself on Minecraft with integrity is, you know, as explicit as it can be while still being somewhat tasteful. Maybe the particularly vibrant color scheme or the fake blood that this time around just works for me, but this one abduction has something going for it. I guess it's the integrity that counts. Weir Water is 10 years old and has nothing to do with water, but it was painfully ahead of its time when it came out. A young woman, who is actually played by a young man in a young and unconvincing wig, is running in the snowy woods from a large man in his underwear who is chasing after her with a sword. By the time she seems to surrender and he's ready to strike, she decides to attack him instead and let's just say that neither he nor her wig make it out of it unscathed. 
Eric Warheim directed this, so I'm told you have to expect pecs in slow motion, and you guessed it, fake blood by the gallon. In the words of Loudwire, in this video a man carries a boy into the woods and replaces his organs with an octopus into the open cavity. Yep, yep. The man then sews the wound up and gently places the child into the ocean. Job for a cowboy's tarnished gluttony is apparently commentary on religious fanaticism, but something tells me someone got a little carried away by gore. Just guessing. Consuming Guilt is a montage of what looks like lab experimentation on a young blonde woman and a monkey who clearly didn't deserve it, juxtaposed with some infrared footage of said woman acting up by a fence. It's a little too fast-paced to be truly graphic, but the shaky cam and low-quality footage give it that unsettling found footage vibe that is pretty scary. Youth Code definitely knows how to amp up the atmosphere. I need you guys to prepare for the caliber we're going to find in the next tier, so I'm going to do that by showing you, or attempting to explain as best as I can without scarring you, a piece of Walls Fall Out. It's about a kind of prolapse you don't really ever want to have. Our protagonist is Cheryl Trigg Murkowski, a beautiful 25-year-old owner of three-fourths of a lung who looks suspiciously older than this, a little older than she claims to be. She has controversial opinions and a lot of sensitive health problems, but this has not stopped her tan addiction. Despite her bizarre celebrity relationships, she becomes a regular character on the Yeast Radio podcast hosted by Madge Bertha Weinstein, aka Richard Bluestein. If this is still not too much, then we're ready to go even deeper. Level 5. Great Balls of Fire Welcome to the R-rated tier. This is music for the after hours, comparable to some of the scariest movies out there and not for the faint of heart. Pardon the censors and euphemisms, but we have to tame the beast. Gears, clocks, and close-ups of bugs. Swedish prog band Meshuga produced a whole horror movie twist on the sentient tree from Pocahontas. Except this one is a little bit more mean-spirited as she swallows our hero up inside and then chokes him, along with a queen that looks like she just came out of the low-budget take on Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, and the extras from Lady Gaga's Alejandro, 10 years on. And it kinda shows. It's got its charm, like an acquired taste. Very acquired. Don't be fooled by the poor video quality. By this point, you should have realized this is not going to stop us from watching some pretty gnarly videos. And Coffee by Aesop Rock is, dare I say, enhanced by the lo-fi treatment. We have a haunted house of slasher tropes, worn torn limps, creepy undead brides, children in rubber masks, and all in the midst of what appears to be a very graphic zombie apocalypse. Folk band frontman John Garniel of the Mountain Goats found his way into the song for what I think could be the most bizarre of its twists. Seriously, how did that happen? The upsetting video for The Bunny the Bears, The Seeds We Sow was directed by a fellow post-hardcore musician, Eric Richter. I for one can appreciate the refreshing change of pace of string masks as opposed to rubber ones. I cannot appreciate the random mutant babies kicked to the wall. At least are CGI, so we can be sure no one got traumatized. Except for me, but I'm used to it by now. Not only is this video not on YouTube, but it's also not on Vimeo. Yes, we've reached the Daily Motion tier. It's official. Ruake's It Was Beautiful But Now It's Sour is almost 12 minutes of blobs making their way through our world in slow motion. The presumably living masses are repeatedly mistreated in a number of less than pleasant ways. It's a little pro-life for me, but the SFX are looking slick, which is terrible, but good, but it's terrible. Daily Motion strikes again for Sutter Kane's Cannibal Ferox. This tightly shot, focused video interspaces shots of Sutter angrily rapping in the woods to shots of him angrily rapping in a rubber mask. And victims of very gruesome crimes that at least look a little less angry but a lot more naked. I like the picturesque choice of adding in some movie clips. Really ties the whole thing together. I know that by this point you were wishing that All Wrapped Up refers to the list, but we're not quite there yet. We're still talking about All Wrapped Up the video. American Head Charge has blessed us with neon colored blood splatters and pig heads. Once again, it never ends well for the pig. 
This edgy music video follows a couple of happy campers on the road before they're inevitably turned into delicious scarlet salami on Minecraft. But damn those colors, I just can't look away. Wow. Yeah, so we didn't talk about Nine Inch Nails closer this time around, but just imagine a more gritty and realistic version of that for this cold dumb video. There's people hanging upside down, some of them are wrapped up in cellophane, some group loving, for lack of a better word, nutrient rich meals courtesy of Mother Earth, all in a nice nostalgic classic sepia color scheme. And hey, female representation. Hooray? Check horrorcore outfits so Doma Gamora doesn't hold back. Ever. And with the eager participation of featured artist Butcher's Harem, you know you're in for at least one dangling pig head. So they're hanging out, wearing pig head masks, I, I really hope it's a mask, and you know, slicing adipose organic tissues. Some are nude, there's an angry female whose makeup plus the splatter in splatter RI, I can't say it, I can't say the title of this. Oh hey, a live performance montage, that's nice, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Darren Gray's Obscure is unexpectedly famous for how forward it is. You probably know about this one. It's the Japanese band wearing black spiderweb tights, you know, the circus flamethrower, goggles, tentacle, tongue, operating table, torso, clown, dwarf, geisha demon. Oh, okay, multiple tentacle tongues. That should clear things up. I like the outfits though. The early 2000s are definitely back. I could get away rocking this. The first time I saw Denzik's video for It's Coming Down, I was reacting like you are right now. What is this? Why is this so tame? There's nothing particularly shocking about this early 90s bar performance. Like it's a little tacky, but it's not appalling. And Oh guys, I am only showing you the censored version. Hidden beneath the bowels of YouTube is what actually was going on during this video. Let's just say there's a lot more piercings of body parts you don't want pierced and people in cages than you'd like to see. Take my word for it and enjoy the tackiness. It's not like your average indie SoundCloud producer guy is immune from this. Our average indie SoundCloud producer guy is Professor Cuddlecore and the name of his infection is Two Eyes. The video for this neat trip hop beat features a somber slideshow of eye deformities. Just the worst of the worst of the worst things that could possibly happen. I don't even want to think about it. Nope. Cavalcare la tigre means to ride the tiger, but that's not what's happening in Kickback's video. Yes, I am nearsighted, but I don't see any tigers. Just people being bound up and offered suspicious pills, punched in the snow, possibly thrown in a fire. I do see a lot of VHS noise. Lord Christ, that close up at the end is just vile. Oh my god. Oh. How, how do you explain? What, what is there to say? It's 1930s inspired torture porn. Black and white so you can't tell what's what and for that I am glad. Then again, this is Silencer and the name of the song is Sterile Nails and Thunder Bowels. So not sure why my expectations were somewhere else. This video is quickly turning into a nostalgia trip. You guys remember our adventures and all the good times with Infant and Nihilator? No? You couldn't care less? No. Oh. That's too bad. Well, maybe the video for Blasphemian will refresh your memory. It has like undead bodies and animals eating and doing, headless animals eating and doing, and they're having such a great time and I'm so glad this is CGI animation. <laughs> when passionate lovemaking turns into a succubus warm woman that eats away at your insides. Oh, Warren, what a concept. Just your everyday set of ordinary issues. Really, commonplace experience. YouTube user Screamer Klaus, bless your heart, has given us this cute little teaser to condense this butcher's harem experience. And what do you know? A pig mask. This is a 30 second clip and I still have to censor nudity. The clip for a clinical forced insertion of things in places where things should not be forced or inserted unless you really want them to is a journey into an underground sewer looking lab. You can only guess what happens, because I can't show it. You know, in our vast journey through music genres through the last hour or so, I wouldn't have guessed we would have wound up with French House at Tier 5. This is the video. 
I can only show you a few seconds of it, so we're done with a Melancholia by Lemon Kuya already, but you get the idea. A compilation of videos that probably got someone on some kind of list I'd rather not be on. I'm on a visa. Sorry. Isn't this song nice? I kinda dig Hot Chocolate by Super Viral Brothers and Polar Bear Hug. Almost as much as actual hot chocolate. Wanna know what I don't dig? The video. It's a bunch of people swimming in raspberry sauce that's supposed to be fake blood with weird umbilical cords things hanging out. I, I like hot chocolate better. Need a reason to hit new grounds in 2021? Make it eat my rotten meat by MC Bushpig and MC Mangina. The delightful animated video featuring a mutant pig-headed deviant and posse of crazy dogs who run around and, uh, interact with adult human women. I said interact, but you know I don't mean interact. And that's all, fuckers. It's a double feature ending with none other than Skinny Puppy. Their 1989 single Warlocks video is an old-school montage of horror-themed classics that could have never aired on any TV at any point in time in the 80s. But you can currently enjoy it censor-free on Facebook. And while we're here, let's also give it up for Testure, which is an anti-vivisection video that explores the thought-provoking, nightmarish question. What does being pried open for a boring hour-long biology class feel like? Not sure I want to ponder this one. And before we finally get to the bottom, let's clear out the air with some of the last honorable mentions in this video. Brother Lynch Hung's Meat Cleaver warrants a mention, though we enjoyed this grin a few times on our other videos already. Just the whole expert bloodbath thing is kind of eerie. I can only imagine what Worn Torn Limbs by Blowerg originally was, but there was no trace of the video on the internet. All that remains is the sad screenshot of YouTube defeat. Although I, I personally think YouTube would call this a victory. Klaus Nomi's lightning strikes should have probably been mentioned earlier than this, but isn't it a nice palette cleanser? Don't you feel kind of glad that the only frightening thing is how sharp his shoulders are? I do. Let's stay here for a while. Let's just sit. Let's just enjoy and... Uh, you wanna go already? You sure? There's no turning back from here. Alright. Bye Klaus. Bye, Klaus. Bye, bye, bye. Our journey continues. Level 6. Three minutes of writhing. At last, we're here. Tier 6. Home of the most macabre and grotesque music ever put to video. That I know of, that is. There is not a lot that I can safely show you, so details will be left out. Only for those who dare actually watch these. Because, censorship or not, I'm sure that YouTube wouldn't even allow me to safely sign back into my account if I were to indulge in this content for too long. So I won't linger. After all, a lot of the concepts are similar. And hey, if a picture is worth a thousand words, I can't even imagine where motion will take us. I don't think anybody was expecting death grind band cattle decapitation to be passionate gender activists, but that is exactly what this song is about. Westboro Baptist Church members, largely criticized for their homophobia and transphobia, are kidnapped and operated on in this video. Director Mitch Massey was excited to take on the challenge and said of the project, have free reign to create something that could piss people off, make family members hate me even more, potentially ruin my future with more delicate bands, and make complete audiovisual fuck you in the most unapologetic way. Hell yes, count me in. And you can count me out. I know looking back is fun and all, though fun in this context is relative, but this one peak is certified fresh. Blood. Inhumane Harvest by death metal band Cannibal Corpse is, um, apparently a public whistleblow on the human organ trade? At least according to guitarist Rob Barrett. Desperate buyers will pay a high price for a much needed organ transplant to either save themselves or a loved one from certain death, which makes for a lucrative business in underground crime ranks. The more you know, I guess, it's good to keep ourselves informed with the issues of our world, so thank you, Cannibal Corpse. Guys, I'll be honest, I couldn't watch this one. I can't do animal stuff, guys. I, I can do human stuff just fine, but Sleepwalkers was too much. I skimmed. I know what happens. Bad. 
bad things happen to cows inside a slaughterhouse. By the way, vegan friends, I can see you using this against me at some point. What's up, guys? And on that note, demon babies with open organs on their faces, seizure-inducing light flashes, take Syriac but replace the cute apes with them, realistic Mojo Jojo style open brains? Uh, I, I appreciate the use of the Daleks. Wow, didn't know the love for who was the strong in Japanese cyber grind. And are Marwos the actual Whovians though? I hope not. I'm not prepared for that kind of video next. Let's play a game for the next one. I'm going to give you a clue and you guys will guess what the video will involve. Clue. AFCO New Zealand Limited is a meat company producing and exporting more than 150,000 tons of beef and lamb products every year. Yep, you guessed it, these sheep are no more. Art punk band Skeptics can confirm. Although this was made in 87 and only made it to TV a couple of times, but I can already feel its intensity behind the screen. Rest in peace of the sheeps. Hope they lived a nice, fulfilling life. Antagonist AD liked the movie Dominion so much they managed to make a whole music video out of it. Quarantine, man. This came out earlier in 2020, so they must have watched it. Tens of thousands of times? Oh, it's just a bunch of animal and people ceasing to exist in Minecraft. Notice a trend yet? You should know by now what the content here is. Thankfully, we have these edgy performance shots so I can have something to show on screen while I drone on. I guess the gates of hell are here on Earth, after all. So. Velvet Acid Christ's pretty toy is longer than 10 minutes and a lot of things happen. Zombie creatures seem to abduct and possess a girl and force her to self-defeat through an excessive number of methods. Literal overkill, I guess. The results aren't pretty and the whole thing is kind of drawn out, but hey, at least we have no pig masks in this one. I know you're only seeing mild psychedelic visuals that resemble a custom Windows XP screensaver, but that's because we didn't get to the dancing eyeballs and fleshy tissue. Wait, I recognize this style. Maruosa artist, is this you? I know this is French hardcore EDM outfit pattern J, but come on, we all had a French phase, sooner or later. There's nothing to be ashamed of here. Now, where are my Daleks? Kettle Cadaver decided to also lend me a hand and give me a version of this video for Graveyard Junkyard that I can show you guys. The original version is only on VK. The hierarchy is YouTube, then Vimeo, then Dailymotion, then VK, and then you're on tour. Don't believe me? Okay, then believe past me. I'm currently watching Graveyard Junkyard by Kettle Cadaver. Okay, it's just a band performing. Slicing through somebody's head. Ah, blood running, running, mixed with hair. I'm using my own to cover it. Just rioting on a stage. Oh my god. Dagger through somebody's mouth. Oh my god, no, no, no. Oh my god. Yeah, dagger through somebody's chin. Oh my god, face covered in blood. Oh my god, what the fuck was that? Oh, oh my god. Daggers going through somebody's groin area. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. I've seen enough. There were 10 seconds left, but look, I, I, I. You see that? See that pain? Do you believe me now? I'm going to do my best attempt at the honest trailer voice. Come cringe with me. This description is almost too good for me not to try. Welcome to hell. Witness some of the most barbaric acts ever captured on film. Hear some of the most shocking music to ever be released. See violence and depravity that only come from the sick minds of Necrophagia and cult film maker Jim Van Beber. Massacre Video is proud to present the extremely controversial Through Eyes of the Dead, completely uncut and uncensored. To avoid cardiac arrest, just keep repeating. It's only a movie. I, I couldn't resist that, I'm sorry. You see, Through the Eyes of the Dead isn't really a music video, it's more of a video that involves music in specific parts. It was made in the early 90s, and I guess it feels like watching a Gen X snuff film featuring reversible cover art, the Manson meditation tapes, and two music videos in one, apparently. Wow, what a bargain. Ah, we're back on that Vimeo grind. Seriously, everything from this song's title to the artist, the featured artist and the album, I think it's its just, I, I can't say it, I, it's best I don't. The video is um, lewd, disgusting, graphic, 
but it has that Amp Lemon Fever Dream vibe, down to the masks he uses when he does the live action adverts for Dollar Shave Club outdoors. I wonder what he'd think about this, and Freud too, while we're at it. Oh hey, these guys have less view than me. I wonder why- okay, I get it now. This is a video of someone playing with scabs. Black and white kind of saves it from being too gray. Okay, it's in full color now. Okay, nope, nope, the makeup artist is too good. I'm out. Bye. Five seconds in and an eyeball is already being pried open, you guys. There is no way I can get away with this one. It's that one Shion on Delu moment with the eye being sliced, but with a little hundred years gap on special effects technology advancement. Yeah, no wonder your vision is hollow eagles. Y'all out there doing this shit. I'm never getting LASIK ever. Oh god. I saved this one for last because it messed me up. It wasn't meant to be disturbing or creepy. This is just reality. Apparently, the footage appears to be from the Gajan Hindu Yearly Festival, which happens in West Bengal, where men and women spend a whole week deriving satisfaction through non-sexual pain, devotion, and sacrifice. Obviously, you can only imagine what that means, but I can't really dive in deep. Yeah, this uncensored video could easily be a National Geographic special. I don't hold that kind of power, though, on YouTube. And that's the tip of the iceberg, when you realize the most insane stuff is right around the corner. And you just had no idea. Congratulations, you made it out alive. Now it's time to see what the rest of the world has in store. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. Lucas Siglina, Paul Tenenholtz, Barak 18, Matthew Gilman, Thomas Rosendahl, and Max Knight. Right now they're watching the censor-free version of this video, so if you want to join them, the link's down there. Follow us on Twitter to keep up behind the scenes, and get updates as I produce the next videos.